Hello and welcome to the video for Gnome Sweet Gnome. Um, this is going to be a quick and easy project, I hope, and um, something that you can work up quickly on a piece that you have in your stash. I use something that I had gotten from CD Wood, Cupboard Distributing, but you're more than welcome to pull something out of your stash and paint it on whatever you'd like. Um, so let's get started. We are going to, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint our um, surface with Irish moss and then I'm going to sand it lightly. Okay, now I need a large flat brush. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding some interest to the background. If you've watched any of my videos or taken a class from me, you hear that phrase a lot, adding interest to the background. And um, so this is what we're going to do now. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this large flat brush and we're going to kind of dry brush streak a couple of colors across it to um, make it kind of look like um, old weathered wood, green wood. So uh, it's based in Irish moss. I'm going to streak it across it with some lemonade and then with some bleach sand. And then later on towards the end of the project we'll do a couple other things that will make it look like it's wood. So, large flat brush. I pick up paint. Don't pick up any water. And just kind of wipe it out a little bit. And I'm going to go horizontally, or as horizontally as I can, with my brush streaking some of this lemonade, this lighter green, across just to give it that weathered look. Um, if you decide you don't want to do this, um, you could go ahead and just paint your back ground with the Irish moss or uh, maybe foliage green because foliage green isn't quite as bright but for me, I, I wanted the brightness of Irish moss in the background. So, getting some good streaks across there. Okay, I'm just going to wipe out my brush. And I'm going to go into the bleach sand. And I'm going to do the same thing. And the bleach sand is going to make it look even more weathered. And we'll come in and we'll age it a little bit with some burnt umber later on and stuff. So it's not going to look exactly like this forever. So don't uh, give up already. So get some of this bleach sand across here. And I have blotches. That's okay. No big deal. It's the background. Or as I like to say, it's the underwear of the piece. Feeling like I need some in there. Alright. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to pause and dry this and put the pattern on for my gnome. And then we'll be back. Alright. <clears throat> I have the pattern on for my little gnome guy and the mushrooms that are next to him. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to base in his face and his nose with coral shell. I'm going to dry brush a little highlighting on him with warm white. And then I'm going to float some shading with a mix of coral shell and burnt umber. So let's go ahead and base in his face. And he doesn't have much of a face. So just a liner brush or a round brush will do. He doesn't have much of a face, but he has a fairly large nose. So and it's just a nice big oblong nose. oval and um, oh, uh, one coat should do I don't add paint 
I don't mean I don't add water to my base coat really and uh, that helps with the coverage all right cute little face doesn't have to be completely opaque and I'll get up a little closer for purpose of this and we're gonna dry that real quick now I use this Ranger heat it craft gun it's a heat gun but it doesn't get hot like the heat guns that you use to shrink wrap stuff and I use it all the time I'm an impatient painter so I want stuff to dry and I want it to dry now so I can work on it okay I'm just gonna put the oval of his nose back on there and one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to dry brush some highlighting on that nose with warm white and the way I like to dry brush is I like to um, load my brush with the paint warm white I'm using right now and kind of scrub it around on my palette so that um, the paint gets through the bristles and then I wipe it out on my towel and then I go to my hand and this is a pretty used up dry brush but it still works and then I go to the piece and dry brush and I'm not getting any off of it so we'll try a different brush one with a little bit more bristles alright same thing go to my hand rub it around when it's uh, it, when you hit your hand it's cool um, when it's not cold anymore that's a good indicator that you've taken off enough paint that you can go to your piece and dry brush I think you can see that it's a little better I'm just gonna dry brush some color some white on his nose because I want his nose to stand out and then you can wash your dry brush out. And the next thing I want to do is I want to give him a, just the hint of uh, little cheeks. So I'm going to pull some bright salmon. And you just need a little dot of it because we're just going to float some little cheeks on his face. Nice flat brush, or a good one anyway. Mine's not so nice anymore. It gets used a lot. So I'm just going next to his nose here and up to his hat, I'm giving him some little cheeks. And then I also want to float this color in the bottom of his nose. I want him to have a nice little cherry pink nose. That looks pretty cute. I'm going to wash out my brush. I'm going to dry that so that I can come on and float shady with the uh, Coral Blush Burnt Sienna Mix. I use two parts Coral Blush and one part burnt sienna for shading. I think that's pretty dry. And again, you don't need a lot. So, uh, the coral blush burnt sienna makes a nice shade for the coral shell color I think anyway so I'm going to float some shading on his face above his nose whole lot of work for a little face <coughs> excuse me I have been fighting a cough then I'm also going to float just a touch of it 
under his hat brim. So basically you end up filling up his whole face area with um, the shading colors. And then I'm going to float a highlight on the top of his nose. I want his nose to stand out even a little bit more. So I'm going to float a warm white highlight across the top of his nose. just to make sure that his nose is forward enough. And I think that's going to do it. He has a couple of little black eyes tucked up under that hat brim. And those are painted with lamp black. Again, you just need a touch of lamp black. You don't need a whole lot. And a liner brush. And we're just going to give him a couple little eyes that are tucked up under his hat brim. They don't have to be the same size. Okay. And then just a very teeny tiny highlight of warm white. All right. How about we work on a hat? So I'm going to pull some colors for his hat, and I will be back. Okay, back, and I've decided I'm going to paint his hat with the color Cinnamon Drop. And, because <clears throat> it seems like gnomes always have red hats. And so let's just get in there and paint his little hat with cinnamon drop. One coat should do. Again, we're going to put a lot of dry brushing and shading and highlighting on top of it. So, looks like I need to go shut my door. My husband has decided it's time to mow the lawn. get this hat painted first. Thankfully we don't have a lot of grass in the front yard anymore so the noise won't be going long. red hat. He's looking more and more like a gnome. Gonna let that dry and come back and start doing some shading and highlighting. Alright, I'm back and I'm gonna do some dry brush highlighting on his hat and I'm gonna go ahead and do that with Bright Salmon which is the color that I used on his uh, cheeks and the bottom of his nose. So, again, use the brush that you like to dry brush with. Um, these are Langnickel Short Round Sable brushes, and I, I have been using them for years, and I'm just comfortable with them, and, the, and so I stick, stick with what I know, which is the advice I give to you. If you have a brush you like to dry brush with, by all means. Just use that brush. Okay, that's a pretty nice highlight. Now I'm not going to wash this brush out. I'm going to pick up a little bit 
of warm white to make a lighter value and you can see that on my hand a lighter value of bright salmon and I'm going to dry brush some brighter highlights and I'm going to keep those mainly through the center of the dry brushed highlight that I did with just plain bright salmon okay cool that looks pretty good Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to float some shading on my hat with deep burgundy. And this little hat is so small. Don't put out a big old puddle of paint. You don't need it. This would be a thrifty paint project. Okay, I don't like that. Sometimes brushes just don't want to be nice, flat, crisp edges. And I would just fight it. So I found another one that I hope will work better for me. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to float shading on the hat, the body of the hat, above this little hat brim. And the deep burgundy is not going to show up a whole lot. It's okay, we will come back and deepen it with another color. I like to use layers of color because um, it gives a little bit more depth. And then I'm going to come in here and where this little tail flips over, I'm going to float some shading in there. And let's go ahead and float shading on the outside edges of the hat brim. And as you can see, I'm walking that color towards the center a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> And then basically all the edges of this hat are going to get a float of deep burgundy. So you can kind of bounce around here and hit all the edges. As your paint dries you can come back and hit other areas. And I don't know if you notice, but <clears throat> I'm kind of a pity pat floater. So a, a nice straight, just one shot float doesn't usually do it for me. As you can see, I kind of pity pat the color around and move it out into the corners and things like that. So I like to play, as they say. All right. Looks pretty good. I am going to come back with a dry brush of bur deep burgundy and just kind of set in some of these um, areas where um, the <clears throat> hat is kind of folded or scrunched or bent in. So I'm going to dry these floats first. And then I'm going to pick up some deep burgundy on my dry brush. And I'm just going to pick a few areas to darken in towards the middle a little bit. I think you can see that. It just kind of makes like it makes it look like it's got a little dent or a fold in there. Not that we're going for like a realistic looking gnome, but every little bit that you can add to make it look a little more interesting is great. Deepen, I'm going to deepen this shading right here. 
So just go around and wherever you decide you want to make it look like it has <clears throat> a little scrunch or um, a little dent, just try brush some shading in there. All right, I think we got that covered. How about if we pull some colors and give him a blue shirt? I'll be right back. All right, I'm back, and I've pulled a couple of blues, two or three of them, and I'm going to base his shirt in with Blue Harbor. I'm going to dry brush some highlighting with Baby Blue, and I'm or Blue Haven, excuse me, and I'm going to float some shading on it with Deep Midnight Blue. So he doesn't have much of shirts going on there. So again, you can use your liner brush or <clears throat> a small round brush. And just paint in his little shirt, including the arms. With baby blue I mean with the uh, blue harbor I haven't used this color in a while it used to be one I used a lot but this just seemed like it would be a gnome shirt color and I'm gonna go over here give him an arm in his shirt. Sorry for the silence. This is intense. He's painting. Okay, let's try his little shirt. I can't wait to get his beard on and he'll look so much more like a gnome when he gets his beard. So I'm going to dry brush some highlighting on him with um, the Blue Haven. I used my dry brush recently, so I need to make sure it's dried out. I do have a few others I could use, but I have favorites, as I'm sure you do, that I like to use. And as you can see, when I do this... Uh, <clears throat> technique where I scrub it on the back of my hand, I do end up with color all over the back of my hand. So it's not a very big area. So you just want to scrub a little bit of color on his arms and body. And then you can wash out your brush because I'm sure we'll use it again. And then we're going to float some shading on his shirt with Deep Midnight Blue. And I need to pause because I need to sneeze. Sorry about that. It must be allergies. So I'm, first I'm going to go and float the shading on his shirt next to the beard. Real quick, 
so we can move on to his arms. And then I'm going to float on his arms next to his body. I just want his shirt to stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to come back with the Blue Haven and float a highlight on the outside edge of his arms and the outside edge of his body. It's not a very big float. Just enough to make that stand out just a little more. So I would start on the arm and then come inside and float on the body. We'll move to the other side. We'll float on the arm. And then come inside and float on his body. All right. Looks good. Now he has a couple of little stick legs down there. And I'm just going to base those in with Hauser Medium Green, I think. Um, yeah, I think that'll do. So I'm going to pull that color, and I'll be right back. Okay. I don't remember what color I said I was going to paint, but I've decided his little legs are going to get painted Hauser Medium Green. Little tiny skinny legs like I wish I had. Well, but he doesn't have any knees, so they're not going to work very good. And rather than pull in another color to highlight, if you have some lemonade left on your palette, if not, squirt out a little bit. And I'm just going to pull a little highlight through the center of his legs with my liner brush with uh, lemonade on my dirty brush. So let's dry his little legs and then I'll float shading at the top and the bottom of each leg with just a touch of Hauser dark green. there to shade, but it needs it. Okay, so now he has some cute little legs. We are going to paint his boots with sable brown. So I'm going to pull that color and some highlight colors and shading colors and we'll be back and do his boots. All right. As you can see, I went ahead and based in his boots with sable brown and I put the pattern on him. He's standing a little pigeon toed. And so now I'm going to dry brush some highlighting with honey brown. And that's basically going to go all over the boot except for the inside that's where his legs are stuck into. I just wanted to gold him up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to pick up a little bit of warm white. And I'm going to brighten the highlight, especially on his toe and on 
the top of the boot, mainly on his toe. Right. And then I'm going to float some shading with burnt umber. And the, for this, these tiny little boots, there's actually going to be a lot of shading. So first of all, you want to go inside the boot next to his legs. So that will be four little places where you need to tuck some burnt umber. And then you're going to go, I'm going to turn my piece around, on the back boot where it's behind the front boot. You're also going to go down the back side of the boot. Both of them. And then we're going to go inside. The boot and darken up that area where his leg goes inside. also has a couple of little creases that we need to address. So a couple of creases on that front boot and there's also one on the back boot. All right and I want to go along the bottom edge. All right. that dry and then we'll float some highlights on this front boot and across the top edge of the boots just to make them uh, more defined. Okay, so I'm going to float a couple of little highlights with honey brown. I'm going to go across this top edge where his little leg goes in the boot. That's going to be on both boots. That makes the inside stand out a little bit more. And I'm going to go on this front toe and down this front little edge. All right. I think Besides putting up the little soles on the shoes, we are almost done with them. So I'm going to line a little sole on each shoe with thinned lamp black. And that's just going to give them a little heel and a sole. So just along the bottom edge there. So he has a little little soles on this boot. All right. Next up, we're going to do that beard. So let me pull some colors for that, and we'll be back. All right. I based his little beard in with um, gray sky and went ahead and put the pattern on for his mustache. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to float some shading around that mustache with a little bit of burnt umber. Now blend it out really well. You don't want it to stand out a whole lot. And I'll probably float this shading on his um, hair beard next to his little hat. And I want to do that before I start layering on the whiskers. I'm going to come through here and float a little bit of burnt umber. And you can see I kept it really light. There. And then I'm going to go up 
under. And around his mustache. Just to set the shadows in before I start stroking on whiskers. Right. So we're going to dry it out really fast. And we'll get to work on his beard and his mustache. <clears throat> Normally, I would use a um, filbert rake to do this, but his beard is so small, and there's no sense having you get out a specialty brush just to do this. So what I want you to do is thin down some warm white paint, and you just use your liner brush, and we're just going to start pulling in some long whiskers and you want it uh, usually gnomes don't have too much curl in their beards not the ones I've seen lately and so I'm just gonna pull some long whiskers. And don't forget to pull some whiskers up here. Get them out onto his face a little bit. You want to make sure that you're pulling off the edge a little bit so that you wipe out that hard edge of um, gray sky, that base coat. Now you could get as wispy as you want. It's a really small liner. You could get really thin whiskers. but. I'm just looking to fill in this beard. And it's going to be a process. It's not going to be something that you do really quickly, unless you're really fast, but I'm not fast. I just like to play and uh, style. Yeah, that's it. I like to style or groom his beard. And you notice I'm avoiding the mustache because the mustache sits on top. So I want to do it separate from the beard. All right, I'm gonna come back and put more on top of that, but for the purpose of getting over to the mustache, this is gonna do. Mustache, it's relatively easy. Just make sure that you pull from all the way around the nose, not just from one spot. Mustaches don't just grow from like one nostril area. They grow all the way under the nose. And he has a big nose. You have a lot of places you can pull mustache hairs from. dry a little bit and then I'm going to come back and pull some uh, a few more lighter uh, 
whiskers with titanium white. This was warm white, and I'm going to bump it up a little brighter, if there is such a thing as brighter uh, white. So I'm going to use titanium or snow white, whichever you prefer to call it. And that would mean I'd have to find it. I'm going to pause while I find my snow white. All right, found the Snow White. It was hiding behind a pile of projects I have to work on. So I'm just going to stroke some little bit brighter, whiter whiskers, especially on the mustache. Just to make it stand out a little bit more. We do need to come back and uh, float a little bit of a shadow under his nose because it wouldn't look right if we didn't. And just a few brighter strands through his beard. You see, I'm not being too careful about these strokes. Some of them are thin, some of them are fat. It's a beard. Not that big a deal. Alright. I think that looks pretty good. And that was probably one of the easiest beards I've ever done. No three layers of color. No filbert comb. But if you wanted to do it with a filbert comb, that'd be great too. It would just look more manicured. Okay. I'm going to touch a little bit of shading under his nose with some very well blended out burnt umber. Just to anchor that mustache under his nose. And if you need to reinforce to make his mustache stand out, you could do that too. All right, it's our little gnome guy. We are going to uh, work on our mushrooms next. So I'm going to pull some paint colors for those, and uh, by golly, we're, we're getting close to done. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, pulled some colors for some mushrooms, and what I'm going to do first is I'm going to base um, the um, stems with bleach sand. Seem like a good color. Stems start out skinny at the top and get white at the bottom. At least my mushrooms do. And all of the stems are going to get based in bleach sand. It doesn't have to take long if you use a flat brush. Okay. And then I'm going to paint the top of one of the mushrooms with a cinnamon drop. I think it's going to be Hmm, let's see which one. Probably this one over here. And this one you can kind of see the underneath side. I'm going to paint that with cinnamon drop also.
right. And I'm going to paint one top with burnt orange. And then I think I'm going to paint the other top with honey brown. So we'll have three mushrooms. To work with. And these will be kind of whimsical and they're not going to be like real mushrooms. I'm going to have dots on them. Maybe some squares. Who knows? It's whatever you feel like. And for this video, it's going to be whatever I feel like. those real quick so we can do some shading and highlighting on them and add some dots all right I am going to get out piece of my handy dandy drywall tape. It's drywall joint tape. And I'm going to just stencil some dots on the tops of these. Now I'm going to see where this top is. And just put that pattern back on. And I like to use a cosmetic sponge and I'm just going to stencil some <clears throat> warm white dots onto the top of this mushroom. They don't have to be even and they don't have to be opaque. Okay. And then maybe I will stencil some marigold stripes onto the if you have a little stripe stencil or you could just do this with a flat brush and you could line some stripes on him so I'm just going to add a little bit of whimsy to them and I think that's gonna do it let's let this dry all right I'm gonna work on this on the bottoms here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to float some shading down the sides and under the mushroom caps with honey brown just to earth them up a little bit And you notice know, I don't really care about the bottom edge here because I'm going to pull some grass over that. So let's go up the other side. This one you want to go around 
that cap that's over on top of it. Okay. Now I'm going to dry brush some highlighting on this orange cap with marigold plus a touch of warm white. So I want a little bit lighter value of marigold. So just pick up a little warm white on it. With your, uh, with your marigold, pick up some warm white. And then we're going to do some dry brushing here. All right. And we're going to uh, dry brush marigold onto the brown uh, mushroom cap also. And then I'm going to dry brush some highlighting on this red cap with bright salmon again, which was our cheek color. And that's going to go right over those dots that we stenciled on there. And pick up a little warm white and go for a little bit brighter highlight. All right. Now I'm going to float some shading on the orange cap with burnt umber. And start at the top, come down this left side, and then I'm also going to go across the bottom. Also going to float the shading on the uh, honey brown mushroom cap. I'm first going to start on the mushroom next to his shirt, and then I'm going to go across the bottom of it. And I'm also going to use Burnt Umber on the red one. Here again, we need to float inside the cap. And I'm going to go across the edge, the bottom edge of this cap. And I'm going to come down back side of it with burnt umber also. And I'll go back inside the cap and float color in there. Basically the inside of the cap gets pretty much filled in with floats of burnt umber. I also want to deepen the shading on the stems with some floats of burnt umber. So I'm going to come back and very lightly float burnt umber across the top of the stems. And then I'm going to go down the inside of the curved edge.
Alright. And one last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, two last things. First, I'm going to take my liner brush. And I'm going to line some ribs inside the underside of that red cap. They don't have to be real noticeable, but you'll see them there. And then I'm going to do a final dry brushed highlight of warm white on all of the caps. So just a little highlight to make them pop a little bit more. All right, cool. We're getting there. Now we need to ground these things and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my flat brush and I'm going to put some grass underneath all this just to kind of ground it and the way I do that is I like to um, double load a flat brush with a couple of different colors of green so I'm going to start with um, the Hauser medium green and I'm going to um, double load it with some Irish moss to start with. So let me pull those colors and we'll come back and we'll work on some grass. Okay, so I'm, I pulled out the Hauser medium green and the Irish moss and what I'm going to do is I'm going to load my brush, my flat brush, with Hauser medium and then I'm just going to corner load into the Irish moss. And what I'm going to do with the lighter color up, I'm just going to stay on the chisel edge and I'm just going to set down and start pulling what is really rough looking grass. And it's tufts and, um, you know, make, just make sure you cover the base of the mushrooms and get some around his little boots and they can go, it can go up on his boots and I didn't want to get too dark with um, the grass because I don't want it to become what you look at I just want you to get the idea that there's grass there. And this is really just quick and easy. You don't have to spend a lot of time. Just kind of think like grass. And that should do it. I am going to come back and pull some little lighter blades just so it doesn't all look the same. And so I can wipe out the bottoms of these mushrooms just a little better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of marigold on that light side of the brush just to pull some lighter color in there. Not a lot. Just to break it up a little bit. All right. Very cool. So, we have some little grass on the ground.
And the next thing I want to do is I want to, I do want to put some little flowers in here. And so I'm going to take a little bit of Hauser medium green with just a touch of burnt umber. And I'm just going to pull a couple of little stems here and there where I'm going to put some little flowers. Because it is a garden gnome. So he needs a few little flowers here and there. One, two, three, four, five. And let's do another one right here. Okay. So I'm going to have seven little flowers. And I'm going to do those with warm white. And they're just going to be little five petal set down flowers. What I mean by that is I just load my liner brush. And I set down one petal, two, three. Four, five. It helps if you kind of think of it like head, arm, arm, leg, leg. So it doesn't have to be real um, fancy. So just some little white. five petal flowers and that just adds another little touch of cuteness to this little guy and I think I might even go and put a little flower on his hat just um, just to add another little touch. So yeah, just a touch of a flower on his little hat. Just to break up all that red. All right. Now, since you set those down with a pretty well-loaded brush, you're going to have to let them dry for a little while. When we come back, um, <coughs> we'll add some little black centers and maybe a few little leaves. All right, so we'll be back when these are dry. Okay, those are dry. And I've put out some lamp black, and all I'm going to do is kind of tap in some little centers on these little white flowers. Nothing too technical. Could make you paint little circles, but that's a pain. Let's just do little taps. And then some Hauser dark green. And you're just going to Give him a couple little leaves. Because flowers have to have leaves. And every one doesn't have to have two leaves. It can have one leaf, two leaves, three leaves. You could put the pattern on for these, or you could just wing it. They're just little leaves. And uh, surprisingly, I'm not going to shade and highlight each one. I'm just going to leave them as they are. And don't forget the little one on his hat needs a little leaf. Maybe right there. 
All right. He's looking pretty cute. So I'm going to go get um, the pattern for the lettering and we'll put the lettering on and now you can make your say whatever you want um, and then we're going to do uh, some uh, kind of antiquing it up with some burnt umber and some edging with some soft black and we'll be back all right I put the pattern on for the lettering but one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to float some shading on the background around the mushrooms and the gnome and around the outside edge with um, some burnt umber and that's just going to start making it look a little bit more aged a little bit more like it belongs in the garden and don't worry about the grass too much but just pop a little bit of burnt umber shading around this and um, I like to mop out my floats what that does it just kind of softens them makes them not a little not as harsh as what they appear at first but I think you can see already that it's just kind of making um, it look a little bit more aged like it belongs out in the yard and there are some things we're going to do to it um, even still that's going to make it look even more aged. So as you can see I'm not being real careful about my float. I'm just getting some color in there to um, set the gnome off the background and give this a little bit more weathered look. Yes, I'm going over those flowers I just painted and everything. It'll be okay. So this doesn't have to take a long time. You don't have to make it a career. A quick soft float right I think I like that better already now to go around the outside edge quickly you want to make this pretty wide because we do do um, some edging on this and you want to be able to see this brown float beyond that edging. Okay, yeah, I'm liking that a little better already. It's all the greens kind of toned down and looks like it belongs out in my garden. All right, now the lettering, I'm going to use a liner brush and lamp black to paint that. And what I like to do is I like to, um, let me see if I can get in closer here so you can see. I like to, I got in too close. Let's focus. All right. I like to flatten my liner brush out so it has a little bit of a square tip. So it's not a point like you would normally do your liner brush. And that's how I like to use it to paint um, my lettering. And so I'm going to get in here and start just painting this lettering
And most of the time I like to go through and do the vertical strokes first and then come back and do any horizontal ones. Of course right now we haven't seen many horizontal ones. Just try not to get the lettering too thick. I tried to use some uh, whimsical type lettering in this to stay with the theme. So we'll come back in here and do this one. And if you just uh, Kind of watch where you're going, not where you've been. It makes it go a little faster. horizontal stroke here and then a repeat Quick and easy lettering. It's kind of nice that it's all different heights and shapes. So you don't have to be overly careful about that. So one thing I am going to do is I'm going to line a shadow with a wash of burnt umber. That's going to be on the background to the left of each letter. So I thin down some burnt umber because I just want this to pop off of the background a little bit. So um, top and left actually. So you see I'm going to the left of each piece of the letter and that just makes it stand out a little bit more from the background. And you even do this on top of the gnome's hat. And here again, it doesn't have to take a long time. Word. That should go relatively quickly. Okay, and that makes that lettering stand out quite nice. So, here we go. We're going to be working on the 
outside trim and um, the board lines that are going to go through this. So I'm going to pull this uh, soft black. I don't want to use black black. I want to use a more brown black. So I'm going to pull this soft black and we'll get to work on that. All right, I've pulled out some soft black and what I'm going to do is I'm going to load just one side of my brush with soft black. And then I'm going to go around the edge of this and very roughly paint the edge with some, uh, give it, give it like a rough look. Like the wood's kind of weathered and cracked away. And this will go pretty quickly. I've been doing this a lot lately. I really like the effect that it gives. So, I think you get the idea. So, I'm going to finish doing this and I'll come back and I'll show you what the next step is. Alright, so I have this soft black rough edge around my whole piece. The next thing I want to do is I want to highlight it a little bit. And uh, you're going to do that with thin warm white and your liner brush. You want to keep this line as thin as you possibly can. So stay up on the tip and stay as straight up and down as you can. But all you're going to do is go along and add a little white line and it doesn't really even have to match all the little nooks and crannies that you made with your flat brush. You see, it doesn't have to take a long time, but it just adds a little finish to that edge and makes it stand out a little bit more. And I'm going to do that all the way around just to finish off that rough edge. So I'll be back with the next step. All right, so the next step is totally optional. If you don't want to do it, uh, that's fine. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to um, give this more of a look of a signboard. And so if I can find my liner brush back, we'll be in business. Put it somewhere. Hmm. Oh, well. That's interesting. Well, we'll just find another one. Here. Uh, about this one. Okay. And so I've drawn some lines around here where I'm going to make um, it look like there's a separation, like there's boards in this thing. And here again, they don't have to be perfect lines. They're just to make it look like there's. Um, this is made out of paneled wood. And yes, you're going to go over some stuff that you painted, but it'll be okay. Trust me. So I'm using soft black again. And I'm just going to give it the look of space between boards. And a smart person would have started at the top so they don't drag their hand through it. And it's going to be a, a thick, thin, rough, wavy, nervous line. It's not perfectly straight line, which you can tell me thank you later.
you can see it's starting to get the, that look already. But again, here again, if you don't want to do this, it's okay. I understand. You took a lot of time and a lot of work on your cute little gnome. And who wants to draw a line through his hat? One more line, and I'm going to call it good, for lines anyway. And now my husband's mowing the backyard. Okay. So just like you outlined the edges with warm white on the uh, outside edge trim, you're going to do the same thing on these uh, divisions. So um, I think we can probably get away with just doing one side. So let's try that. I don't know if you noticed, but this is kind of an experiment for me. But I'm liking it. So I'm just going to do the right above that line just to make it stand out a little bit more. And yes, just like the line itself, you go over things you've painted. And this shouldn't take too long. And we'll have one more thing to do. And then you can sign it. Add a hanger. Varnish it. And hang it outside in your garden or um, wherever you'd like. But I appreciate you doing this project with me. The last thing I want to do is I want to spatter it with some burnt umber. So I'm going to thin down some burnt umber and maybe pick up a little soft black to deepen it just a little bit. But I've thinned it down pretty much. And I'm a two brush spatterer so I've loaded one brush with very thin uh, burnt umber with a touch of soft black and I'm going to beat the ferrules together and just add some spatters of burnt, um, that burnt umber soft black mix just to add a little bit more interest to it. Now I probably don't want his face to be spattered too much so I'm going to come back with a wet brush and wipe his little face clean. So there you go. There's our cute little piece called Gnome Sweet Gnome. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that you'll paint this piece. Uh, whether you do the, the uh, lines to make it look like a um, slatted board or not, that's perfectly fine if you don't. But I appreciate you spending time with me, and I'll see you again in a few months.